I I have seen few raised hand uh, in the last session. So yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. If you have yes. any questions, so please uh, tell me now. Uh, we can finish it up, then we can go for presentation. Proceed for that. Rick, Rick, you had a question. Tejas had a question. So Rick, can you speak? Uh, am I audible, sir? Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. I had a question before this. It was that yes. using C plus plus or any C, we can use any POSIX format of threads, P threads, or even thread headers. So why don't we use just that? I mean, if we are using P thread, that gives us a lot of flexibility. OpenMT on the back end does use a lot of threads. So the difference or the advantages or disadvantages, um, I would like to know about that. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, it has some its own advantage and disadvantages. So uh, POSIX is fine. At a thread level also, you can do some parallelism. And OpenMP also does this one. But uh, as I mentioned, so OpenMP is mostly directive based programming. And also, you can go for a com conditional compilation. So uh, say if I am talking about say C or C++ program, you, your implementation where there is a open MP, then uh, you can do go for conditional compilation that if you, in your system there is a support for open MP, then you go for uh, open MP compilation. If there is no support, then you compile simply using G, um, uh, G++ as a sequence uh, sequential program and then uh, you execute that one. So one program can act both that advantage and apart from that one yes so there are some advantages and disadvantages also it's true now it's up to you so which one you will use so only point here is that so we are giving you uh, one opportunity or exposure to this shared memory programming and as i mentioned at the beginning of my presentation nowadays it's not possible to get a single core computer all are multi-core computers so uh, while I am writing the program, if I keep that in mind and accordingly, if I go for any thread level programming, then definitely I can gain some uh, performance improvement uh, over the existing sequential program that I used to do. Professor Mitra, should I Thank add you, sir. Uh, yes, yes, few please. lines in, in, in this direction? And OpenMP, uh, one of the drive for OpenMP were the uh, uh, the domain application community and they have big legacy codes which has to be parallelized in that sense openmp goes in a more uh, incremental way for uh, some fortran and c codes especially one, one big drive was fortran codes which are available with different physics communities and then they're using posix speechheads etc were not that trivial so the easy learning curve of openmp is another point that's why uh, this is preferred Thank you, sir. I have just one more question in regards to this. It's that uh, if I have to dynamically create threads, for example, if, for example, in our system, if we have multiple instances of the same software running, for example, command prompt, and then we, I'm talking about, let's say, Windows command prompt, and Windows command prompt helps us to do uh, uh, parallelly create, execute multiple commands using the start, start something, and then start another thing. So it literally does that. So if we try to implement a certain system based on that, yeah, uh, something that is related to that using C++ or something like that. I have just done that and if and I have done it using threads. So it takes one command, takes a thread, uh, puts the command in a system directive and then executes it. That is just one part of it. So for others, uh, there may be some other threads involved. So is that an efficient way or should I replace it with OpenMP or something like that of some directive format? I mean, no, look, my opinion is that so. OK, so first of all, you should not uh, confused between multitasking and uh, simultaneous or uh, concurrent execution. So two things are completely different. OK, so when say you are uh, opening different command prompts in Windows, so <clears throat> that is kind of multitasking. It is not that uh, you are doing the parallel execution of that one. So parallel execution is that uh, when say from a, a process is divided into different parts. So either for shared memory or distributed memory, or for say targeted for the GPU and uh, a small small parts of the same program is being executed concurrently 
on different computing nodes or on different threads. So then uh, we are going for some performance improvement. Now regarding this performance improvement, so as you said that thread, that thread can you can generate in a number of ways. But my point is that say when you are analyzing one program and then the program, if it is a sequential program, then that program has some computational time. Now that computational time on top of that one, whenever you go for say OpenMP, MPI or GPU based, whatever it is programming, then there is of course a overhead. Now if your overhead is not too much, so irrespective of the kind of programming language you are using, or say you are working so at the very low level, say in Linux or say in Windows and generating the threads. But if your overhead is not too much, in compared to the total overall computation time of your sequential program, then it's perfect. You can go for that one. But as uh, Professor Roy has mentioned that correctly, that the main or major purpose of this uh, OpenMP or MPI is that there is a vast amount of scientific code which was written and developed. So in the er era when there was no multi-core or there was uh, no situation where people, uh, people can go for concurrent execution of the threads. Now what will happen with those cores? So will there be somebody who will sit down and analyze the program, go for a parallel uh, algorithm for that one and implement that one? Or it will go for some simplistic way so that uh, it can exploit as much as possible the hardware or the, as much as possible the existing cluster facility in order to speed up. So that is the situation and you have to deal with that one. If you are starting afresh, so, so you are given the problem, you are analyzing the problem and implementing that problem, then you have plenty of opportunities and you can pick any one. And probably uh, there is a, there can be a debate that why you have picked this cluster or this programming language, etc. But what will happen with the legacy codes, which was written in C or in Fortran? So most of the scientific programs was written in the Fortran. So what will happen with that one? Say I can give you a few examples of the Fortran code, which is doing uh, excellent. And from accuracy point of view, and personally I know that if you go for another implementation for that Fortran code, then some numerical error will occur and you may not get that kind of accuracy. Now, what do we do with that one? So if you have the source code inside the source code, isn't it simple that you just add few directives and then you go for compilation and execution? So that was one of the primary uh, or one of the motive motivation for this, this uh, kind of uh, open MP programming. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hey, just you have any question? They just you have to unmute audible. yourself. I'm audible, sir. Yes. Yes, good afternoon, sir. So my first question is like uh, we were going iterating through for loop in the third code you uh, gave us. So uh, yeah, like uh, I'm asking if we can uh, go for recursive algorithms or dynamic algorithms where we have to call recursively on other parts like deducting first part and then working on other part of the code. So also array also. So like, is it possible that we can divide these uh, calls into threads and then uh, then- uh, Yes, we're uh, not clear. Then, so your, your point is not clear. Okay, uh, I'm not audible right now. Yes, you are audible, but voice is not clear. So sir, I'm saying that can we, if we have to call recursively, then can we call it all the recursive calls in threads and then make those threads as processes and divide in threads different cores? Yes, that I will discuss now. So in the work sharing construct, I will discuss how to parallelize a for loop or if uh, there is some sections which are mutually data independent, how to divide that one, what are the different syntax that I will discuss now. Okay, sir. Uh, two questions are also there. Like the first is that if we like in quantum computing when we work, so we cannot always ac have access of a quantum computer for large scale algorithms. Sometimes we use simulation programs. So, uh, is there any way like in HPC that we can uh, use any kind of simulation program for that? Like if we want to work on some big data, but uh, we are not having resource sufficient resources. 
uh, we are having less cores in our laptop so is there any simulation program we can work on like quantum computing oh there are plenty of simulation programs there are plenty of simulation programs uh, personally i am not from the field of this astrophysics and astronomy so i do not have any knowledge of this uh, areas uh, molecular dynamics uh, program maybe some other speakers uh, will talk about that one but in general in the science and uh, in engineering also there are plenty of such programs where uh, the parallelization is there and you can go for parallelization it is there yes so last simple question is like if we are practicing on this thing in future we communicate to regarding any problems we face so if you have any problem you can uh, you can drop me an email i will try my best to reply you okay thank you sir that's it. Okay. okay so santanu santanu you want to tell something automatic question uh, i mean in this workshop is there going to be to be a discussion of how to use python with, within open mp and this thing because i think in astrophysics now most of the programs are written in python and there are like elbin library to use uh, is sort of off the shelf codes for many things in python so it'd be useful if some time could be spent on how to use open mp with python because there i've actually run into problems so i mean not utilize the full code so so sumnath any comment uh, uh, no, 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 not definitely in this workshop. We are at least for the HPC part, we'll be focusing mostly on C because uh, this is a widely used language among different groups. But for Python, I believe that multi threading is uh, can already uh, done, in, can be done in Python without using OpenMP. Python itself has uh, inbuilt multi threading. Maybe uh, Professor Pavitra Mitra will be. Yeah, to. but uh, maybe we can follow it up with a workshop. We should have or a workshop in Python later. Or maybe in the discussion session tomorrow we can discuss a bit yeah, about but since, uh, Just a comment, right? Since this is yeah, yeah, for very us. well accepted. Very well. We fully agree with you. We completely agree with you. Uh, uh, but uh, we, we are actually planning to have uh, a complete dedicated workshop on uh, HPC using Python. Okay, but we this workshop schedule does not include any of this. In the discussion session, we'll try to throw some light on it. Uh, but maybe we, we can send you the. We are soon going to uh, arrange another workshop purely focused on Python for HPC. You have to wait for that. In this, we have not scheduled. We can have a short discussion, a short overview uh, during the discussion session. We, we don't have other slots. That's the thing. Uh, so, uh, but a very well taken question. I mean, we, we, we are with you. Okay, maybe let us start the uh, talk. Okay, yes, uh, sure. So, Professor Mitra, can you please start? Uh, Do you want to see my slides? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay, uh, okay. Thank you. So let us continue. So uh, <clears throat> primary, uh, the example that I demonstrated was very simple examples and uh, uh, is not of much practical use. Of course, we learned that in how many ways we can uh, put the number of threads where we can put that one, who is portable, who is not. So those things we have discussed. But if I am concerned regarding the performance enhancement or improvement, then I have to look for the work sharing constructs. So where there are works, I mean the set of statements, how can I divide that one into different modules so that or say subset of statement so that each subset will be supplied to one thread for its independent execution. So that is interesting to say. And so the simplest one that I am going to discuss first is the for construct. Now you are familiar with this for, irrespective of the language. So there are different uh, different flavors of this loop. And uh, for is one of the most uh, favorite loops for all the programmers. The 
construct for the for loop is that pragma omp for after that one different clauses will come so what are the clauses i will come after that the syntax says there will be a new line please do not misread this new line as the text new line so it is the so you have to press the enter button in order to go to the next line that is what is new line it is not new line in literal meaning like this new line after that you will go for this for loop in the clause part there is private first private last private reduction ordered schedule no wait so these situations are there let me briefly go through each of them so that you can have a feel that i covered almost all the aspects of the for loop in order to divide or distribute the workload among the different threads so when i am discussing this slide then my assumption is that a number of threads will be generated or fought in order to compute the for loop and you know that in the for loop i wish to divide the for loop into several parts one thing you should note that i will also come in one slide that for loop can only be parallelized if there is not dependency so if there is any dependency something like say xi equals to say x minus uh, uh, x i minus 1 sorry x my uh, i minus 1 plus say some some expression which is also function of say i minus 2 if that kind of dependencies are there then clearly you understand that x i cannot be executed or computed unless otherwise x i minus 1 or say function of i minus 2 is not computed so there are ways that i can handle that one but for this slide when i am discussing then i am assuming as if each for each xi or each iteration can be executed independent of each other and i believe you know that when i am going for any parallel algorithm or parallel implementation then i need to do go for data dependency analysis first so if there is any data dependency then that goes as a single entity i cannot break it into two separate nodes and if i break it then some sort of synchronization is required so that logically it will not generate some incorrect result okay now whenever it is for loop and without any loss of generality if i assume that this for loop consists of say 100 iterations so 100 times the loop will iterate and the number of threads can be any number say it can be 4 it can be 6 it can be 8 it can be say 12 anything right the simplest thing you may think that okay when i have say 100 number of iterations then i will divide the total number of iterations into different threads simple thing is that 100 if i have four number of threads 100 by 4 so which means 25 so 1 through 25 will go to say one core 26 to 50 will go to another core 51 to 75 will go to another core 76 to 100 will go to another core okay now when they will go to one core each then that kind of scheduling or that kind of a uh, uh, division or distribution of the work is called as the static kind of scheduling okay so 
going to the correct slide actually. So I have more slides. This I will come back later. Okay, so this is called as the static. So here I am mentioning in this example has pragma OMP parallel for schedule static and number of threads as a clause I am using here. And you know by this time that this is with the highest priority or precedence. Now, why it is static? Because the distribution or scheduling of the iterations among the different threads are done at the beginning of the execution of the for loop. So when say program execution enters at this stage, then it will fork threads, capital threads, number of threads. Then it will look for n, 0 through n, the say size of the loop, it will divide that one and it will assign one thread for that. Okay, perfect, no problem in it. Now, when it is assigned to some thread, that thread is running in some processor or core. When it is running in some processor, then Last time when I discussed, I mentioned that why different number, why the order is not maintained in the printf statement when I am printing 0 through say 15 by each process, um, by each threads, or when I am printing the thread ID. The reason is that load of the thread. Now, for this for loop also, if I go for this static scheduling, say 100 number of iterations four threads are there. I divide it. Each thread will get 25 addresses. Perfect. Now it might be possible that one chunk, say 25 addresses, any one out of four is assigned to some thread and that thread is being executed in some processor. That processor is already overloaded with some other job. That job may include some other programs say, or say you are listening to music or say you are browsing some other job. As a result, it might be possible that. All three other threads has finished their execution, but one. Is waiting. Now you know that even one is waiting. Then based upon that one, the overall performance will degrade. Because at this point here, so when the join will take place before that one, all the threads must reach to that point so that the join will take place. Thinking about that one, you may come up with some idea that. OK, let us not distribute the complete workload at the beginning. Because I do not know the system's behavior. So currently say in my department 32 core system is there and I alone is using that one. Maybe. I am wrong. Some of my colleague is also using that one. Some other time maybe I am alone, but not always. So is it possible that dynamically I can understand or during the program execution, I can understand what is the load of the system and accordingly I can adjust. Perhaps what I wish to do that if I feel that, OK, I am creating four threads, but if one thread is slow, then uh, give him only five iterations instead of 25. And rest 95 can be distributed among three other threads. For that, you can go for dynamic scheduling. In case of dynamic scheduling, you mentioned one chunk size here. 
and you say that schedule is of dynamic kind. Then what it will do that it will select the chunk size. Usually what happens if there are four threads and number of iterations are 100, then maximum chunk size will be 25. Using static, it is 25. But for dynamic, instead of 25, what you can think of, say, you said that chunk size is 5. So what will happen? 0 through 4 will be given to somebody, I mean some thread. 5, five to 9 will be given to uh, another thread. 10 to 14 will be given to another thread. 15 to 19 will be given to another thread. And whoever will finish first will get 20 to 24. Next, who will be finishing will get 25 to 29. That way, if you go, then you see that you during the run time are deciding about how to distribute your workload. Right? That is your dynamic scheduling. Now, in the dynamic scheduling, there is an advantage that you see that during the program execution, you can identify what is the complete workload and accordingly you can schedule. Schedule means you can assign or distribute the workload. Now, what is the disadvantage of the dynamic scheduling? The disadvantage is that in case of static scheduling, you note that at the beginning of the execution of the for loop, I distributed it. So all the threads are happy and all the threads are aware that I have to finish from this to this. Say from I to I plus uh, 25, I have to finish. And he will keep on doing that one. Now for the dynamic scheduling, after finishing 0 to 5, uh, 0 to 4, then it will come back and you will give it again. And that way you see that that give it again, that process is taking extra time. Again, this extra time, whether will affect your overall performance or not, depends upon many factors like whether your system is um, uh, is not uh, equally weighted uh, by the by the uh, equally loaded by the work or whether say your job execution is taking too much time so based upon these factors it may vary but you see this is an option and when you are using some system which is not dedicated to you and mostly a number of people are using, then it might be a good idea to implement the dynamic schedule instead of the static schedule. But what will be the chunk size? Determining that one is also up to you. If you go for a very small chunk size, say the default chunk size, which is one, then you know that there are four, four threads. So initially you assign to four of them, and after that one, so 96 times they will come back to you for asking for one job. That is clearly a overhead. If the loop size is very high, then default chunk size should not be very low. That indicates how many times it will come back. Now, if it is five, then initially you are assigning 20. Then how many times it will come back? So 80 is remaining, so 16 times it will come back. It's better compared to 96. Okay. Now there is one more that is called as the guided, which says that iterations are divided into chunks of decreasing size. The chunks are assigned to the threads as they request them. The chunk size controls the minimum size of the chunk. So the kind of problem, you know that there is one implementation and with that implementation, if people face some problem because of some application, there is some improvement. So because of the issues with the static, 
where at the beginning I am scheduling everything and as a result, if it is not doing good, I am handicapped. So I cannot make any changes there. So I have to sit down and I have to look at it. OK, on the other hand. When it is dynamic, that particular problem is solved. But it incurs some cost. Because of the dynamic allocation. Of course, deciding on the optimum chunk size is a very good choice, but it is not easy to decide on the optimum chunk size because it depends on many things, including the system, its load, etc. So why we should not go something like initially we will decide about some chunk size. And based upon the performance, we will decide whether to change the chunk size or not. I mean, to decrease the chunk size or not, and reach to some minimum stage. That is nothing but the guided. Okay, so runtime uh, is not much used, so I am not going to that one. So this way, static, dynamic, and guided, and that is my for loop implementation. OK, so that is one work sharing construct where iterations are being modeled. Now, if it is for loop, it's fine, but you know that do while, while or other loops, everything actually you can implement as a for loop. So you just convert to for loop and you go for this one. OK, now apart from that, now I am going back. So what are the other situations for the work sharing constructs? This situation says that one is for four, another is for six sums. And another may be for one sequential execution. OK, so how it differs? Let us take some example. So this is one situation. Array i equals to f array i minus one. What I said. Or array i equals to array i minus one plus two multiplied with x. So x is not a problem for me as of now, but there is a dependency on i minus one. So when there is a dependency among the data, then I cannot go for the parallel or concurrent execution. For the for loop also, at the loop level, I can understand that it is just the iteration, but I have to analyze each of the statements inside the for loop block in order to know that whether among the iterations there is any dependency between the data or not, or among the data or not. If it is not, then only I can go for parallelization of the for loop, otherwise there will be a problem problem you cannot see and that is the most most annoying thing in this openmp programming is it may not give any error no syntax error no semantic error it will compile it will execute but you will not get the result say one se sequential program was given to you and you said that you know the Parallel programming, say OpenMP programming, and you add the required directives, you compile, compile perfectly, execute, execute perfectly. Hardly you will, you will get some error during the execution. It depends. But result wise, it is not correct because, say, inside the for loop is something like this or this is there, and you do not do any analysis, and you assign, uh, you go for for loop implementation then definitely it may create a problem when i minus one will go to one thread and i will go to in another thread and they are executing out of order and when they will be executing in order then you will get the correct result and you see that sometimes it is giving the correct result sometimes it is not giving the correct result so there is some logical mistake now in another situation, 
say if it is not for loop, what block of statements are given? So here is say x equals to y plus j, a equals to b multiplied with c, a c equals to ut plus uh, half f to square, f equals to ma. So these equations are given. So ma is a multiplied with a that you understand. Now you see that x equals to y plus j, x y j was not used later. And if I assume this is part of one block, previously or also it is not used. A equals to B multiplied with C and A is used here. So I cannot compute F until A is computed. Again, A is equals to wow. T plus half FT square is independent of any other statements. So what you can think that this green will go to one thread, say thread zero, red will go to another thread, thread one, and these two will go to say another thread, thread two. Okay. Now this is not inside the for loop. These are the block. Um, um, uh, block. This is uh, this is a block, and inside that block, a set of statements are there. But if you can do this kind of data analysis data dependency analysis, then you can think that this is one independent say section, section. Blue, two blues are actually one, another independent section. And their order must preserve because I cannot say that if will be computed first and then A, then the result will be different. And red is another section and my definition of the section is a subset of the statements inside the block and there is no dependency among the sections okay so if it is the situation then i can have apart from this parallel construct section construct here it says that sections construct Pragma OMP sections clause new line. So this is one section, pragma OMP section new line, structured block. So statements will be here. Pragma OMP sections new line, next line, then structured block, another statements will be there. Maybe green equ equ equation will be here, red equation will be here. In another section, there will be blue equation. Now, if it is the case, then what will happen? that during program execution at this point, a number of threads will be created. The, the creation of the thread can also be done previously, say has pragma OMP parallel you created and you are using it here. If you are using, then this directive says that inside this, there are a number of sections and it is the responsibility of the programmer to make sure that there is no data dependency among the sections because the because each section will go to one thread okay so grossly we divided the complete work or set of statements into two parts one loop construct where in iterations, the same set of statements is keep on executing. Of course, the variables are changing. In another case, a long list of statements, not part of the loop is given. In both the cases, I will do first the data dependency analysis in order to understand that if I break them into different sections, then that section um, across the sections, there should not be any data dependency. Then only I can assign them to some thread independent of each other. Now, it might be possible that you are interested about only one section and you know that there is data dependency and I cannot go for parallel execution. But that particular block of statements are inside the parallel execution. 
So here the usage is like, say at this point of the program, you created parallel, say four threads you created. So I mentioned you thread creation and joining is an overhead and you wish to avoid further further thread creation and you are executing and this is your say block inside this one everything is in parallel you wish to compute but you identified that there is a block of statements these block of statements cannot be executed simultaneously there is some data dependence then you call that as a section now in the last slide i mentioned if several such sections are there inside pragma omp sections you can write pragma omp section pragma omp section pragma omp section but if there is only one section so in the previous slide what you can do that inside this one you can have only one pragma omp section inside pragma omp sections it's possible but what you can do you can instead use another construct that is pragma omp single then everything inside this which is which will be written here will be executed only by one thread any one thread then that is similar to executing the sequential or serial program right so that is what is done using has pragma omp single but if you insist that okay if it is single i want to execute in only the master thread as of now whatever i have done i didn't mention anything like i can divide the complete work into different parts and then i can mention okay you go to that thread you go to that thread you go to that thread by thread id i didn't mention but for this if i want that it will be only one thread which will execute and that is going to be the master thread then instead of has pragma omp single here i will write has pragma omp master okay and it is written here the single construct allows code that is serial in nature to be executed inside a parallel region the thread execution the thread executing the code will be the first to reach the different directive in the code so what it says that from here to here everything is parallel inside only one block of statements are there and i want it to be executed sequentially so two things you can do you can close the parallelization here and then you can open it here so that this part falls out of the parallel section and it will be executed by only one thread there is no doubt but that way you are joining four threads here and again you are forking four threads here just for nothing the same thing can be done if you say has pragma omp single instead of having this one and this one then up to here four threads will be in execution for this one only one thread will be in execution and after this one again four threads will be in execution then the question is that which thread will pick it up the thread who will reach first will pick it up so it may be zero one two three four anyone but if you wish to stick to your proposal that it should be executed by the section only um, it will be executed by the master only then you have to write at this position that pragma has pragma omp master then what will happen if incidentally thread number zero will reach here first then it will pick it up otherwise all the threads will bypass this one and it will wait for the thread zero to come and whenever it will come it will execute in there so this is the syntax now which one to use and where that depends upon your say programming expertise or upon the problem also okay so that is the master construct that i mentioned 
Okay, I feel that uh, uh, I am very close to my allotted time. So instead of going further, uh, let us see that if you have any question for up to this, what we have discussed in the work sharing construct. Yes, uh, Devotra has a question. Uh, please unmute and tell me. You are explaining the single construct. You said that uh, the that one of the threads which will be free or which will be done with this work. Uh, uh, so I, I I missed for, you. I missed you. So yeah, uh, sir. Uh, my question is. Uh, yeah, my single is uh, reg regarding single construct. So uh, there you were telling about the section that will be executed by the uh, assigned thread. Uh, right. And uh, till then, uh, the other three threads are waiting for it to finish. Uh, what if in this particular time somebody else is you ending up uh, occupying the other three threads? Like, is it a possible case? Yes, yes, yes. that is possible. Uh, so then, how to deal with this situation? I mean, I, my three threads are waiting. Somebody else are using them, and then when this section is done, so the code will just stop uh, and wait for them to be cleared up. Exactly, that is the correct thing. Okay. So I don't have time, otherwise I can go. So I missed one important thing that is synchronization. So when say it is has pragma OMP parallel, then this opening and closing breast. So at the opening, all the threads are created and at the closing, all the threads are joined. Now, if it is the case that some threads has reached to this closing breast, but not others, then it will wait for the others. And when it will come, then only it will be coming out of the parallel sections. Now for this one also, if it is the case that one thread has picked this section, but all the rest, say three other threads have finished, then it will bypass and go to the next step and it will wait for that one. Now that way, you may also ask one more question that say, there is some dependency in your code after this section and that dependency is because of the variables that you computed into this inside this section. So, am I clear? So here my point is this is your theoretical opening of the parallel region and closing of the parallel region. Okay, now inside there is one section and I want that it will be executed by single or master. The difference you can understand that say only master thread number zero or any thread who will reach first will execute. Then the point is that when say one will be executing this one, others will bypass and they will go for the rest of the execution for them and will reach here and wait for all the threads to come so that it can come out from here. Now if there is a variable say v and i need the value of v outside this single then the question is that what will happen because only one thread say who is fast who will th that thread will reach here and it will start executing but it will take some time to finish the execution inside this one by that time other threads may come down at this position but if they wish to compute this value, and by that time, if the value at this section is not yet computed, then there will be a logical problem. So here, what you have to do, you have to put some barrier. So barrier is the explicit synchronization of the thread. So it's kind of a dam, which says that, okay, all the threads will reach at this position, then only they will move on to the next instruction or next segment. Until then, they will wait. Okay, okay. Thank so you. the barrier synchronization is important and it is required for this kind of situation. But as you understand that if this barrier, if you use frequently, then since all the threads will wait, for, so threads will wait for others to finish, then excessive use of the barrier is also not good because it will make your parallel implementation a serial or sequential one. 
Okay. Did I yes. answer your question? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, okay. That's much clear. Uh, you can yeah yeah my question is how uh, if there are uh, threads then and uh, how does it decide to which thread or which core one has to go does it do randomly or which is whichever no, is, is physically is, is closer for, yes that is a good question cc so as i mentioned if you are using job scheduler then job scheduler decides otherwise operating system will decide so as a programmer, uh, you need not have to worry about that. Uh, OK, but it goes like uh, how uh, do these schedulers they decide physically uh, whichever is easiest to communicate that way or? Uh, no, no. Uh, OK, so it is uh, more convenient for you to think in that way. But what operating system used to do, they use one thing that is called as the affinity mask. Using that one, they keep track of the availability of the core. And you know that whenever say multiple cores are there, then uh, they can use any one. Yeah, Prala, can you unmute yourself on? Yes, yes, see. So uh, it is the responsibility of the operating system, and uh, there is a, a bit vector and affinity mask through which it makes that assignment. I didn't cover that one, but yes, it is there. That it is a very good question. Yes. So uh, j just a, a small part of a question, like, uh, is it? this masking uh, is it some kind of overhead can we call it overhead or no no this is not uh, program overhead in that way but you know that overhead is counted as part of the fork operation that i mentioned whenever say you created one thread then that thread must be assigned to some processor right right so it is part of that thread creation itself so not extra overhead so thread creation oh. overhead includes this one. So whenever there is a thread creation, so lot of lot of uh, steps are used to not lot, but several number of steps are used to take place. So one is that uh, current states will be saved, then it will jump to the uh, next instruction state, and then it will uh, assign some uh, processor or code for that particular threads execution. So all those is included as part of the thread creation overhead. Yes, it is overhead, but not extra overhead. It is part of that. OK, thank you. OK, uh, Professor, Professor Benachi. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah. So thank you very much for the excellent talks. I just wanted to Ask you about uh, these the, some books or some can, can uh, you, papers where we can look. Again. Can you repeat again? Your voice got dropped. Okay, so I just uh, I just wanted to request for some references uh, to these uh, okay, topics. Okay. I, I, yes, I I will I will do that one. Okay, I will give some reference. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. So we'll provide it in the web page. In the web page, we'll give all this. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, so uh, Deepak. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Sir, my question is that, uh, uh, actually uh, for optimizing or for uh, minimizing the overall time for execution of any code, we cannot do that. Uh, we assign 90% of the workload initially and 10 percent uh, we will break 10 percent of the load and give the threads who will come first so uh, your 90 percent and 10 percent i do not understand actually so the, i uh, 
yes sir so i am saying that uh, 90% uh, load initial uh, we will uh, assign initial load 90% to the threads and we keep 10% uh, load for the threads which will uh, finish their assigned work and uh, uh, so that the idle time of the threads can be reduced is it not a good approach sir no yes i got your point right, right now that is not a very good approach so for that so you please look at the amdahl's law so amdahl uh, provided one um, simple mathematical equation which says that it is only if you increase the parallel component of your program then only you will get the overall speed up of your computer otherwise it doesn't matter how many threads or how many cores you are using it will not give you much uh improvement in time so when you said that 90% you are not doing anything but for the 10% you are distributing to the uh, uh, different threads which means that major part of your program is actually sequential which is not very good but yes i can understand that so given a problem uh, or say given a program so it might be some dependency so one thing you can analyze the dependency you can reduce that 90% to some extent or as much as possible or otherwise i uh, i would say that yeah it, it will not be a very good uh, so speed up will not be very good thank you sir thank you uh, any other question anybody you can speak up you have to unmute yourself and speak Hi, professor this is saurav here yeah okay. go ahead saurav okay okay so uh, it is just a comment not a question in such so i noticed bunch of questions are relate uh, i mean somehow related to open mp runtime implementation so i have been part of it so maybe you can highlight about uh, about the open mp architectural review board and some of the implementation dependent issue for example uh, that num threads thing so right so if you pass a num thread then it is uh, if you don't pass the num thread then runtime will automatically pick up some data based on your machine and if you pass it then compiler is passing that as an argument and runtime will take care of it so can you uh, describe a bit about Uh, the runtime aspects or let's say implementation specific aspects because every compiler comes with their own implementation of openmp that is decided by openmp architecture review board can you put a comment or something okay uh, thank you for your question but if you say like that way then we have to go back to the basics of the compiler so i am not uh, very much sure that how much exposure the uh, my audience have regarding the compiler but you know if i tell you in summary that the kind of overhead that it will put is that say whenever say you are executing or say writing a program so first of all you have to think that whenever you are calling a function then that is a overhead function call is always a overhead compared to that if you are not implementing a function so if you are using some inline functions or say macros then there is not overhead much but if you if you are using some or calling some function then that is a overhead but that kind of discussion is always there for any kind of compiler and yeah. that is very basic but what we are discussing here that when we are going for the open mp then open mp what it uses to do so it creates a number of threads and joins the number of threads so it creates the number of threads distribute the total over uh, workload among the threads and then once the execution is over it joins that one so this extra part which is extra on top of the say basic say if i am discussing in the context of c programming language or say c compiler so this extra part which is on top of c compiler so we this we are discussing in that context only so i believe i mentioned this one that uh, overhead and also just now uh, in response to probably tejas i mentioned that whenever you are calling the function and forking the so calling the function is obvious overhead for c compiler as well as open mp compiler but what is not obvious to c compiler is that whenever say you are uh, forking the threads 
and also i just in in the uh, response to the question i mentioned that whenever say in this example also i was discussing that a number of trades you have popped at this position and at this position you are closing in between you have one section that demands sequential execution so two approaches are there one approach that you close the parallel execution before that and then fork it again and i mentioned that can be an overhead because you are closing the threads and opening the threads again another opportunity uh, another option is that you are not doing that one rather you are asking for a single execution for that now when it is a single execution then what will happen for the rest of the threads so rest of the thread will bypass and when they will bypass they will go for further execution when they will go for further execution then there are two situations as such there is no dependency on this single so they will finish their execution reach to the end and wait for the rest of the threads will come here but if it is not that if there is a dependency on the value computed at this single stage then forcefully i have to synchronize all the threads by putting some barrier here now putting the barrier is also an overhead which is unseen for any sequential program so for the sequential program i do not give have, i do not have to put some barrier now if i put more and more barriers then i am increasing the computation time so it is moving away from the parallel but towards the sequential program i believe all those things i already have discussed and in the context wherever it is required pranayda uh, i think he was asking something uh, different that if you do not specify anything by default open mp picks up some numbers yes that it also i mentioned it is it compiler is... specific there was the question to that yeah yeah i'm sorry for the interruption so uh, uh, i mean that was just a comment so i mean i wanted to highlight a bit i mean uh, asking your comment on open mp architecture or let's say uh, there's a st standard associated with open mp that compiler has to implement right and uh, so there there are certain aspects that open mp runtime libraries has to implement for example the num threads example so uh, can you uh, uh, let's say give more example of let's say so, so that with different compilers open mp might pick up different values as default Mm -hmm, is correct. that what you are asking for? Yes. Is this the question? Yes, yes. Okay, so the no, different. Why will pick, no, why why will it pick different? So why will it be compiler specific? Picking the different number of uh, different see, number if of. I, if I run uh, with, without mentioning any environment for num thread, if I run it in PGI using PGI CC, it will pick up only one thread. But if I run with GNU. It will pick up the maximum number of cores available. So these are something compiler specific. Different compilers have implemented. Uh, yes, yes, uh, professor, uh, so, sorry to interrupt again here. So uh, I miss miss put in my question. So I was mentioning it as a runtime specific because there's a there is a OpenMP standard and compiler has to implement and there's a OpenMP runtime library that will uh, that will be responsible for doing automatic or let's say the environmental initialization. So that will be picked by the uh, the implementation. For example, GNU comes with GOM, GOMP is the library uh, that open F open MP automatically links. So uh, those kind of issues uh, I was uh, talking. I think best to re refer to that uh, openmp.org for the details. Yes, correct. I think rest of the questions you can mail to the uh, email address. We will forward yes, it to the mail. speaker. You can mail, mail that to ah, me. And you I can mail, we will forward it. So right now, let us thank uh, Professor Mitra for the excellent talk. Okay, let us thank, thank you. Professor Mitra for the uh, nice exposition. Of course, there are many, many things to study. I mean, it's an, we, we cannot cover everything in a two hour talk. Uh, but we are open to question. If you send us the mail as the questions, we will forward it to Professor Mitra. So thanks, Professor Mitra. Uh, thanks Thank for you. the excellent talk. We will uh, now move to the next talk. Uh, so participants, we have a break till 3.30, about a 15 minutes break. And then